Okay, in the previous video we were introduced to the concept of box plots. In this video we're going to be looking at how to identify outliers and we're going to use some of that five number summary that we did in box plots to be able to find an outlier. So if you're not familiar with that or if you have not watched that video yet, you want to make sure you go back and do so first. So this portion will make more sense to you. So graphs can help you see data values that are extreme. The graph below or to the right there is a histogram of the payrolls of the 30 Major League Baseball teams on opening day, rounded to the nearest million of dollars. Total team payrolls were as follows, and they give you the list of numbers. And what they've done is they've uh, created a histogram uh, for the data there. Now sometimes we have observations where we have numbers that look like they're extreme. They're either extreme on one end of the majority of the data or the other. We call those extreme values outliers. So for example, maybe this could be considered an outlier. Maybe this is possibly an outlier. I don't know. We're going to figure that out. Now how do you find out if something's an outlier? Well, a common method is what's called the one and a half times the IQR criterion. And basically, uh, what's that, what that's referring to is if you take one and a half times the interquartile range, that's going to give us a number that we're going to use to see the, uh, if, it's on what, if there's any outliers on either end of our data. And looking here, I notice that there's a typo. This should be Q sub 1. Uh, basically, what we're going to do now is we're going to take our uh, Q3, our uh, median of the upper half, and add whatever one and a half times our interquartile range is. And if there's any numbers beyond that point, those numbers would be um, outliers. And then on the other end of the spectrum, if we take our first quartile, so the median of our lower half of the data, and subtract from that the one and a half times the interquartile range, anything less than whatever that value is, is going to be an outlier on the lower end. Now in a box plot, or a box and whisker plot, outliers are represented by points beyond the whiskers. So in the previous video where we saw the box plot, these are what we call the whiskers. So if there's any outliers, we'd represent those with points of wherever they would fall in the number line beyond those uh, our maximum and minimum value there. Okay, so let's look at our um, five number summary here. So they gave us the they do the five number summary for us. And they say that the minimum value is 24, the maximum value is 190. Um, we're going to use the one and a half times the IQR method to determine if there are any outliers, and if they are any, we're going to identify them. But before we can do anything, we first need to figure out well what is the interquartile range. Now remember the interquartile range. is found by taking and subtracting our Q3 minus our Q1. So we're going to take 100 minus 62, which gives us an interquartile range of 38. So our IQR is 38. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 1.5 times 38, because that's our 1.5 times IQR criterion. And when you do that, you're going to get uh, an answer of 57. So what that means is if I have any points that are 57 uh, units beyond the uh, value for Q3, or if we have any units that are um, less than 57, less than our Q1, then those are going to be outliers. So let's see what we would have here. So we would take our Q1 minus the 1.5 times the IQR to figure out if there's any low, uh, outliers on the lower end. So when I do that, 62 minus 57 gives me an answer of 5. So if I have any values that are less than 5, those would be a lower end um, outlier, and I don't. My smallest number, remember, is 24. So now I'm going to take Q3 plus my one and a half times the IQR. So I'm going to take my Q3, which was 100, 
plus 57, which gives me 157. So anything larger than 157 would also be an outlier. Well, as I look at my data, remember we have 190 as our largest number. We don't have any other ones that are um, beyond 157. So we would have one of the outliers would be $190 million. Okay. So now I want you to take the data given in example one and the one and a half times IQR method to determine if there are any outliers. So the example one is going back to what we talked about in the previous video um, right here. So take the five number summary that you had from the previous video and see if there are, and use that data to see if there are any outliers. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check your answer. Let's see how you did. If you remember, the IQR from that data would be 1.5, where we take and subtract, again, the Q3 minus Q1. So for that set of data, our Q3 was 46, minus 37 is 9. So that's our interquartile range. Now I'm going to take and figure out, well, what is the 1.5 times the IQR value? Well, when you take 1.5 times 9, you're going to get 13.5. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take well, our Q1, which was um, 37. We're going to take 37 minus 13.5. And when you do that, you get 23.5. And if we look at our data... Our smallest number was 29, remember, so there's not an, a lower end outlier. So now let's see if there's an outlier on the upper end. So now you're going to take our maximum value, which was 46, and add to that our 1.5 times IQR value, which is 13.5. And when we do that, we get 59.5. And remember, our largest value there was 50, so for this example, there are no outliers. So let's just end this video by um, looking at these histograms in this first row and the box plots in the bottom row and see if we can match these up. Now let's start with histogram A because it looks like this is definitely an outlier. So that particular histogram has an outlier. It actually has a couple outliers from when we look at the actual histogram. Or actually box plot I should say. Um, so those two match up because that's the only one that has outliers. This one here, histogram B, looks like it's got data that's spread out quite a bit. So that box plot going from the lowest number to the, uh, from the minimum to the maximum is going to be a larger spread than histogram C, than what the box plot for histogram C would be. So that one matches up with box plot 3. And this one here, it's a little bit smaller, so plus it's the last one, so we can see that that one's going to be matched up with box plot 1. So there you have it. So in this video, again, we just focused on how to identify those outliers. So now after watching these two videos, hopefully now you will have no problems with your assignment. So with that, good luck.